my man. And all because my friend George spotted the great... The casting process for Newhart was a careful one, with each role specifically tailored to the actor who would play it. For instance, the lead role of Dick Loudon, an author who moves to Vermont to run a quaint inn, was given to Bob Newhart. This choice was natural, as the show was actually a continuation of his previous successful series, The Bob Newhart Show. The character of his wife, Joanna Loudon, was portrayed by Mary Fran. She was chosen for her ability to match Newhart's comedic timing and for the warm, nurturing energy she brought to the character. The role of Larry, Daryl, and Daryl, three brothers who live in the woods and work at the inn, was originally written for two actors. However, during the audition process, the producers were so impressed with the chemistry between brothers Tony Papenfuss and Harvey Atkin and their uncanny resemblance to each other that they decided to cast all three brothers. Tom Poston, a seasoned comedic actor, was cast as George Utley, the handyman at the inn. His audition showcased his impeccable comedic timing and his ability to create a lovable, bumbling character. Julia Duffy, a relatively unknown actress at the time, was cast as Stephanie Vander Kellen, the ditzy, self-absorbed maid at the inn. Her audition demonstrated her talent for physical comedy and her ability to play a character that was both annoying and endearing. The casting of Newhart was a testament to the power of chemistry and the importance of finding the right actor for each role. The show's success can be attributed in large part to the talented cast that brought these characters to life. Do you of him? Okay. <laughs> George Dust. The director of this classic, Newhart, was the talented Bob Mackinson. Known for his unique comedic style, McKimson brought the story to life with a perfect blend of humor and heart. His approach was heavily influenced by his background in animation, which allowed him to create dynamic and engaging visuals. Collaboration was key to McKimson's process. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that every aspect of the show aligned with his vision. This included working with the writers to develop the script, as well as coaching the actors to deliver their lines with the right tone and timing. Makemson's directing style was characterized by his attention to detail and his commitment to capturing the perfect shot. He was known for his innovative use of camera angles and his ability to create a sense of movement and energy within each scene. One of Makemson's greatest strengths was his ability to bring out the best in his cast. He had a knack for casting actors who were able to embody the spirit of the characters he created, and he worked closely with them to help them develop their performances. Despite his many accomplishments, McKimson remained humble and dedicated to his craft. He was always looking for ways to improve and push the boundaries of what was possible in television comedy. In the end, McKimson's directorial vision was instrumental in making Newhart the beloved classic that it is today. His unique style and approach to storytelling continue to inspire and entertain audiences, and his contributions to the world of television will always be remembered. <laughs> Newhart was a popular TV series that aired from 1982 to 1990. It starred Bob Newhart as Dick Loudon, a writer, an innkeeper, in a small Vermont town. The show was known for its humor, wit, and clever writing. I remember watching Newhart every week with my family. We would gather around the TV and laugh together at the antics of Dick and his eccentric guests at the Stratford Inn. The show was a source of joy and comfort during a difficult time in my life and I will always be grateful for the memories it gave me. Newhart's enduring qualities include its timeless humor, memorable characters, and clever writing. The show was able to tackle contemporary issues while still maintaining a sense of warmth and charm. It's no wonder that Newhart has remained a classic in the world of television. Do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to Newhart? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. As we delve deeper into this classic TV series, you'll discover many surprising, funny, and even sad facts about Newhart. So, keep watching this video to learn more. A joke or two, gave a haircut, I even got to charge her blouse over the phone. <laughs> Let's delve into the production of the 1982 TV series, Newhart. The show's set design was a crucial element in creating the quaint and picturesque setting of the Stratford Inn, nestled in a small Vermont town. Art directors and set decorators worked tirelessly to ensure every detail reflected the warm, inviting atmosphere of a quintessential New England inn. The main filming location was Burbank, California, where the production team built a replica of the inn's first floor. 
including the lobby and Vermont room. They also constructed several exterior sets on the Warner Brothers Ranch, such as the Town Square and Dick's House. These sets were meticulously designed to capture the essence of a charming, close-knit community. However, filming a TV series in a studio environment presented its own set of challenges. The crew had to be innovative in their problem-solving, especially when it came to simulating outdoor scenes. They employed various techniques, such as using large painted backdrops and manipulating lighting to create the illusion of natural environments. One notable challenge was filming the series' opening sequence, which features a sweeping aerial view of the Stratford Inn and its surroundings. To achieve this, the production team used a remote-controlled model of the inn, filmed against a matte painting of the Vermont landscape. This cutting-edge technology allowed them to create a seamless and visually stunning establishing shot. In conclusion, the production of Newhart was a testament to the ingenuity and hard work of its cast and crew. Through their combined efforts, they brought to life a timeless and beloved classic that continues to captivate audiences today. My color is sort of my steady. I mean, we're not engaged. The television series Newhart brought laughter into the homes of many families during its run from 1982 to 1990. Created by Barry Kemp, the show starred Bob Newhart as Dick Loudon, a successful author and innkeeper who moves with his wife Joanna from New York City to a small town in Vermont. The series is a follow-up to Newhart's previous show, The Bob Newhart Show, which aired from 1972 to 1978. Newhart is set in the picturesque Stratford Inn, which is owned and operated by the Loudons. Throughout the series, Dick and Joanna interact with the quirky townsfolk, leading to humorous situations. The show's ensemble cast includes Mary Fran as Joanna Loudon, Tom Poston as George Utley, Julia Duffy as Stephanie Vanderkellen, and Peter Scolari as Michael Harris. Bob Newhart, born on September 5, 1929, brought his unique brand of humor to the show. His deadpan delivery and subtle reactions to the absurdity around him made Newhart a memorable comedy. The show's writers, including Barry Kemp, David Angel, and Peter Tolan, created a well-crafted and engaging script filled with witty dialogue and clever situations. Newhart was praised for its clever writing and strong performances. The show received numerous award nominations, including 21 Primetime Emmy Award nominations, with Bob Newhart earning four nominations for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series. The show also won the Golden Globe Award for Best Television Series, Musical or Comedy in 1985. The show's setting in a small town in Vermont added to its charm. The quaint and idyllic setting provided a perfect backdrop for the show's humor. The town's residents, with their eccentricities and quirks, created a rich and diverse cast of characters that added to the show's appeal. In conclusion, Newhart is a classic television series that brought laughter and joy to many families during its run. With its strong performances, clever writing, and engaging storylines, the show remains a beloved part of television history. Either side is fine. Well, one side has a lump, but it is... In the 1980s, the television series Newhart brought laughter to many households. A significant part of its charm was the music that complemented the narrative and emotional tone. The show's score and soundtrack were carefully crafted to enhance viewers' experience. The main theme song, composed by Henry Mancini, sets the light-hearted and comedic tone for the series. Mancini, an accomplished musician, used a playful mix of instruments, including the accordion, to create a memorable and catchy tune. The theme song's upbeat tempo and lively melody instantly put audiences in a good mood and prepared them for the comedic antics that followed. In the second season of the popular TV series, Julia Duffy joined the cast and quickly made her mark. She received seven Emmy nominations for her supporting role, but unfortunately never took home the award. During her time on the show, Duffy's pregnancy was a challenge that required clever solutions. She hid her growing belly by wearing loose clothing and standing behind furniture. As for the show's iconic opening sequence, many might not know that the meowing sound in the MTM logo is actually the voice of the show's star. Bob Newhart. This fun fact adds a personal touch to the classic opening of the beloved sitcom. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, one, one reason I, I, wanted, I wanted to meet you was because I One of the most iconic scenes in the TV series Newhart is undoubtedly the final episode, where the entire series is revealed to be a dream of Bob Newhart's character from his previous show, The Bob Newhart Show. 
the scene where Bob wakes up in bed next to Suzanne Plachette, who played his wife Emily on The Bob Newhart Show, is a shocking twist that left audiences stunned. The direction for this scene was impeccable, with a slow build-up to the big reveal. The use of lighting and camera angles created a sense of tension and anticipation as the camera slowly zoomed in on Bob's face as he woke up. The performance by Bob Newhart was also noteworthy as he perfectly captured the confusion and shock of realizing that his entire experience in Newhart was just a dream. Cinematographer George Spiro Dibby also played a crucial role in creating the iconic scene. He used a soft, warm light to create a cozy and familiar atmosphere in the bedroom, contrasting with the bright and vibrant colors of Newhart. This contrast helped to emphasize the surreal and dreamlike nature of the scene. The impact of this scene on the audience was immense, as it completely upended their expectations and left them questioning the reality of what they had just witnessed. The scene has since become a classic example of a twist ending and is often referenced in popular culture, according to Bob Newhart. The idea for the twist ending came from the show's creators, who wanted to find a unique way to end the series. Newhart was initially hesitant about the idea, but he eventually came around to it and saw the potential for a memorable and impactful scene. In an interview with the Archive of American Television, Newhart reflected on the scene, saying, I think it was a brilliant way to end the series. It was such a surprise, and it really made people think about the nature of reality and storytelling. Overall, the final scene of Newhart is a masterclass in direction, performance, and cinematography, and its impact on audiences continues to resonate to this day. <laughs> well, uh, these heels fit rather nicely. I'm glad, and they're on sale, too. In the TV series Newhart, Peter Scolari joined the cast in 1984, replacing Stephen Campman. Initially, Scolari had guest starred in two episodes before becoming a main character. His role was pivotal to the show's humor and dynamic. The names of the quirky characters, Larry, Daryl, and Daryl, might have been inspired by the main character of W. Somerset Maugham's book The Razor's Edge. Larry Daryl In the story, Daryl travels the world in search of life's meaning, much like the show's characters' philosophical discussions and actions. Exterior shots of the Stratford Inn were filmed at the Wayberry Inn in Vermont. This classic inn provided the perfect backdrop for the show's setting, enhancing the viewer's experience and immersion into the storyline. Leather collar with metal studs. <laughs> I think I'd have to add. The 1982 TV series Newhart, starring Bob Newhart, made a significant cultural and social impact. The show resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of humor, wit, and clever storytelling. Set in a quaint Vermont inn, the series offered viewers an escape from their daily lives, inviting them into a world full of charming characters and light-hearted predicaments. Newhart's influence on pop culture is evident in the way it paid homage to and parodied various aspects of American life. From its memorable characters to its memorable running gags, the series left an indelible mark on television history. Its unique blend of humor and satire inspired countless other shows, solidifying its status as a classic. Moreover, this classic contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. For instance, the series often tackled issues related to small-town living, the role of technology in society, and the complexities of human relationships. By presenting these themes with humor and grace, Newhart encouraged viewers to reflect on their own lives and experiences. In essence, Newhart's cultural and social impact can be attributed to its ability to captivate audiences and spark conversations. By presenting a world full of warmth, humor, and relatable characters, the series created a lasting legacy that continues to resonate with viewers today. Delving into the show's rich tapestry of stories and themes is akin to stepping into a bustling landscape, where each episode offers a new adventure and a fresh perspective on the human experience. <laughs> I know <anymore. laughs> In 1960, Bob Newhart's comedy album The Button-Down Mind of Bob Newhart topped the charts, even beating out Elvis Presley and the original Broadway cast album of The Sound of Music. This album's success led to three Grammy Awards, including the Album of the Year for 1960. Later, in the 1980s, Newhart became the title of a popular television series. The opening credits of this classic series are filmed in and around Sandwich, New Hampshire. Aerial shots of Maple Street start the sequence, followed by Sandwich Town Hall and the Grange Hall, depending on the episode's theme song length. The car is then shown turning from Skinner Street onto Church Street. 
In the show, Daryl and Daryl, two of the main characters, were initially named Larry, to avoid confusion at home, and at obedience school, they decided to change their names. These quirky characters added a unique charm to the series, making it even more memorable for its viewers. Kind of likable. Yeah, I could learn plumbing from him in a minute. Newhart, the 1982 TV series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show was praised for its unique blend of humor and wit, with the New York Times commending its impressive cast and clever writing. The Los Angeles Times also lauded the series, stating that it offers a delightful mix of comedy and charm. Audiences were quick to embrace this classic, with many appreciating the show's ability to balance slapstick humor with more subtle witticisms. The show's quirky characters and small town setting resonated with viewers, leading to a loyal fan base that would follow the series throughout its eight season run. The critical acclaim and popularity of the show translated into numerous award nominations. Newhart received a total of 25 Primetime Emmy Award nominations, including for Outstanding Comedy Series. Lead actor Bob Newhart was nominated for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series for his role as Dick Loudon, while actress Mary Fran received a nomination for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series for her portrayal of his wife. Joanna, in addition to its Emmy nominations, Newhart was also recognized by the Golden Globe Awards. Bob Newhart received a nomination for Best Performance by an Actor in a Television Series, Musical or Comedy, and the show was nominated for Best Television Series, Musical or Comedy. These accolades are a testament to the talent and hard work of everyone involved in the production of the show. For Bob Newhart, these nominations added to his already impressive career, which included previous Emmy and Golden Globe wins for his eponymous 1970s series. For the rest of the cast and crew, the nominations served as recognition for their contributions to this beloved classic. The awards and nominations also speak to the enduring appeal of Newhart. Even decades after its initial run, the show continues to captivate audiences with its unique blend of humor and charm. The accolades serve as a reminder of the show's impact on television history and its place as a beloved classic. Dick, I feel funny about this. Maybe you should just wait in the car. Look, Joanna, this in the entire run of this classic television series, the name of the town where the Vermont Inn was located was never revealed. This detail added an air of mystery to the show's setting. Julia Duffy, one of the main cast members, had to miss three episodes due to her pregnancy. The show's writers decided to write her character's pregnancy into the storyline. Eileen Brennan, who played the role of Doreen Lewis in the film Private Benjamin, was a talented actress known for her ability to bring comedic sparkle to her characters. She was often cast as the gruff but lovable type, playing figures worn weary by life, but still able to laugh off the worst. Her performance in Private Benjamin earned her an Oscar nomination and an Emmy win for the television spin-off. Brennan's career was marked by her seven Emmy nominations, including for her appearances in Taxi, 30-something, Newhart, and Will and Grace. Her work in these shows and films showcased her versatility and talent as an actress. You come with me. You... Stay here. That's in the early 1980s, the cast and crew of Newhart found themselves in a small Vermont town, filming what would become a beloved classic. Bob Newhart, playing the role of an innkeeper, often shared lighthearted moments with his on-screen wife, played by Mary Fran. One day, during a break between scenes, Newhart decided to play a prank on Fran. He filled her car with popcorn, much to her surprise and amusement when she discovered it later. The show's picturesque Vermont setting was, in fact, a facade built on a studio lot in California. To achieve the desired authenticity, the production team brought in 30,000 pounds of local dirt and 15,000 plants. They even constructed a working water tower, which became a fixture of the show's opening credits. Behind the scenes, the camaraderie among the cast members was palpable. Tom Poston, who played George Utley, was known for his playful antics. During one episode, he accidentally knocked over a lantern, setting a small fire on the set. Fortunately, the fire was quickly extinguished, and Poston's mishap became a humorous anecdote among the cast and crew. Julia Duffy, who played Stephanie Vanderkellen, was no stranger to laughter either. In one episode, her character was supposed to appear in a bathtub, but a wardrobe malfunction left her without a bathing suit top. The prop department quickly fashioned a makeshift cover using a sponge, and Duffy managed to film the scene with a good sense of humor. The show's creators, including Bob Newhart himself, 
drew inspiration from various sources. One episode was inspired by a real-life experience Newhart had when he and his wife stayed at a bed and breakfast where the hosts were avid bird watchers. This episode became one of the show's most memorable, with the innkeepers, the Newharts, and their guests participating in a comical bird watching competition. In the end, Newhart became a beloved television series, captivating audiences with its witty humor and endearing characters. The friendships forged on set, and the laughter shared during filming left a lasting impact on those involved, creating a legacy that continues to resonate with fans today. Kirk, you're in love? Yes. What's her name? What's she like? <sighs> in the TV series Newhart, Bob Newhart's on-screen wives became progressively younger. Suzanne Plachette, his spouse in the Bob Newhart show, was eight years younger, while Mary Fran, his wife in Newhart, was 14 years younger. In his subsequent show, Bob, Carlene Watkins was 23 years younger than him. Julia Duffy, who played Stephanie Vanderkellen on Newhart, reprised her on-screen relationship with Peter Scolari in Jason Alexander's TV show, Listen Up in 2004. The duration of the Loudon's marriage in Newhart was inconsistent. In an early episode in 1982, they had been married for 16 years, but in a 1984 show, it was stated to be 12 years. When the Loudons were about to renew their vows in 1986, it was said to be 15 years. This inconsistency was not uncommon in sitcoms of the time. In essence, Newhart was a show that featured a successful comedian, Bob Newhart, with a series of younger wives and a fluctuating marriage duration, Julia Duffy, who played one of his wives, went on to work with Peter Scolari in another TV show. Well, I better get to the theater. Oh, by the way, Joanna, I need a pair of earrings for the... The TV series Newhart, which aired from 1982 to 1990, has left a significant mark on television history. This classic comedy, starring Bob Newhart as a Vermont innkeeper, is still remembered for its unique blend of humor and heart. The show's impact can be seen in the way it inspired future sitcoms, Newhart was known for its clever writing and memorable characters, which became a blueprint for many successful comedies that followed. The series also broke new ground by featuring a strong, independent female lead in the character of Joanna Loudon, played by Mary Fran. Newhart has also had a lasting influence on the world of television through its memorable storylines and iconic moments. Who can forget the series finale, where Bob Newhart wakes up in bed next to his character from his previous series? The Bob Newhart Show. This twist ending has been hailed as one of the greatest finales in TV history. This classic series has also inspired numerous tributes and homages in popular culture. From The Simpsons to Parks and Recreation, many shows have paid tribute to Newhart in various ways, highlighting its enduring influence and appeal. In conclusion, Newhart has left a lasting legacy and influence on television history, inspiring future filmmaking and leaving a mark on popular culture that continues to resonate today. Then you give them back their pens. <laughs> give them back their Jane Milmore made her writing debut with the classic TV series Newhart. In an interesting turn of events, several of Bob Newhart's co-stars from The Bob Newhart Show and Newhart, including Marsha Wallace, Bill Daly, Tom Poston, William Sanderson, Julia Duffy, and Peter Scolari, all appeared together in an episode of Fred, George and Leo in 1997. Initially, Jerry Van Dyke was the first choice to play George Utley, but unfortunately, his audition for the role did not go as planned. Despite this, the show went on to become a beloved classic, featuring a talented cast that brought the story to life. Again. Not me, Steph. Oda Allen has been banished from this nape. <laughs> Bob Newhart, the star of the classic sitcom Newhart, had a close friendship with Suzanne Plachette, his co-star from The Bob Newhart Show. In 2008, he spoke at her funeral alongside Marsha Wallace, another co-star and friend from the same show. Julia Duffy, who played Stephanie on Newhart, has cited Bob Newhart as her favorite comic inspiration. The characters Larry, Daryl, and Daryl were initially intended to be one-time appearances on Newhart. However, the audience's positive response led to their development into regular characters. William Sanderson, Tony Papenfuss, and John Volstad portrayed these characters, who were known for their memorable introductions and minimalist dialogue. In summary, Newhart's cast members had a strong bond both on and off-screen, and the show's audience played a role in shaping its characters. Bob Newhart's comedic influence extended to his co-stars, and the show's unscripted moments contributed to its enduring appeal. Unleash him! Hey, 
in one episode of the classic show, Newhart. The forgetful mayor, Chester, suddenly bursts into the Stratford Inn shouting about the collapse of the Thomas Hill Bridge. Interestingly, the actor who played Jim Dixon, Chester's clumsy friend, was himself named Thomas Hill. The show's creator, Barry Kemp, faced concerns from CBS about the character Kirk Devane, portrayed by Stephen Kentman. The network feared that a character known for lying and insincerity would drive viewers away. To counter this, Kemp and his team developed Kirk's girlfriend, and later wife Cindy in an attempt to humanize him. However, by the second season, the network's continuous pressure to eliminate Kirk's character negatively affected Kemp and company's relationship with Kampman. The introduction of Peter Scolari's character, Michael Harris, in the second season proved to be a game changer. Scolari's excellent chemistry with the other cast members and his popularity among the audience ultimately led to Kampman's departure from the show. Scolari has often expressed his admiration for Bob Newhart, citing him as his favorite acting mentor and best friend. The bond between these two actors contributed significantly to the success of this classic television series. Don't you want anything on the menu? No, no. Let's go. Just give me one last shot. In the second season of this classic, a change was made to use film instead of videotape, giving it a more realistic look, an idea brought forth by the show's lead actor, Bob Newhart. Actor Peter Scolari, who frequently appeared alongside Newhart, shared a friendly bond with him off-screen and often played golf together. Newhart, like Bill Cosby, was known for his clean humor, rarely resorting to profanity. The closest he ever came was in his bit The Driving Instructor, where he quipped, I don't suppose it is so damn funny. He's not a doctor. <laughs> well, not technically, but he's a, he's a certified uh, junior life Bob Newhart best known for his role in The Bob Newhart Show, and as Dick Loudon in the TV series Newhart, had a unique approach to his name. As a young boy, he preferred the name Bob, leading him to drop his first two names, George Robert, and adopt Bob Newhart as his stage name. Peter Scolari, who played Michael Harris in Newhart, also had a notable career. He starred in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show as Wayne Selinsky, and was well known for his role in this classic television series. Despite their success in Newhart, both actors had thriving careers before and after the show. Their talent and dedication to their craft have left a lasting impact on the world of television. Disappointed. <clears throat> Larry, when I suggested you, you find a new friend for Sam. In the classic TV series Newhart, Bob Newhart had a sister who led a very different life from his character. She was a nun named Sister M. Joan Newhart. Meanwhile, one of the show's most beloved cast members, Julia Duffy, gained widespread recognition for her role as Stephanie Vanderkellen. Interestingly, Duffy's co-star, Peter Scolari, found an acting mentor in Bob Newhart, learning valuable skills and techniques from the veteran comedian. These behind-the-scenes connections added depth to the show and created a unique dynamic among the cast. To Dartmouth. Oh, what are you studying? European history and Renaissance theology. I'm helping Leslie find a subject for her... Bob Newhart, known for his television series with his name in the title, starred in Newhart alongside his wife, Ginny Newhart. They are parents to Robert William Newhart, Courtney Newhart, Timothy Tim Newhart, and Jennifer Newhart. He is also an uncle to Paul Britton. In Newhart, there are two characters named Daryl who rarely speak. The reason for their silence is that when Daryl was seven, he sat on a porcupine, and ever since, he ain't talked since. Interestingly, every television series that Bob Newhart has starred in has his name in the title, including The Bob Newhart Show from 1961, The Bob Newhart Show from 1972, Newhart from 1982, Bob from 1992, and George and Leo from 1997. This consistency in naming the shows after the lead actor is noteworthy. Newhart is one of the television series that Bob Newhart starred in, and it features a unique cast of characters, including the silent Daryls. The show is a classic example of Bob Newhart's acting prowess and his penchant for starring in television series that bear his name. Excuse me, are you open? Oh, yeah. Do you have any vacancies? Sure. In the creation of the TV series Newhart, the role of Larry was originally intended for Tracy Walter. However, William Sanderson ultimately secured the part. Bob Newhart, who played the main character, had parents with distinct professions. His mother, Julia Pauline Burns, was a housewife, while his father, George David Newhart, co-owned a plumbing and heating supply business. Mary Fran, who portrayed Joanna Loudon, took the initiative to visit several Vermont inns to conduct research. 
Among her findings were the Falsgraf dishes, which became prominent props in the Stratford Inn within the series. This classic television show provided a glimpse into the intricacies of innkeeping and the captivating relationships between its characters. You better renew it. I will. Do you remember the classic TV series, Newhart? This popular show from 1982, starring Bob Newhart, brought us nine seasons of laughter and memorable moments. Perhaps you found yourself drawn into the storyline, set in a small Vermont inn, where quirky townsfolk and humorous situations created a unique world. As you watched, did any particular episode or character resonate with you personally? Maybe you could relate to the innkeeper's struggles or found the town's eccentricities reminiscent of your own experiences. By sharing these memories, you can connect with others who also cherish this show and its impact on their lives. We would love to hear about your favorite moments from Newhart. How did this series influence your perspective on cinema or shape your sense of humor? By engaging with our community, you can help create a vibrant discussion around this beloved show. To join the conversation, simply like this post, share your memories in the comments, and subscribe to our channel for more explorations of classic television. Together, let's celebrate the enduring charm of Newhart and the joy it has brought to so many for generations. Oh, and look! Here's my grandfather's original plaque!